I, I, I'm guessing it's supposed to be an eagle, but it does really look like a chicken. It looks uh, like I thought it was a turkey at first. I'm glad it looks like an eagle on your end. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm guessing it's an educated guess because there's a lot of USA gear with eagles on it, but it really does look more like a chicken. So. I won't wear this the whole time, but for sure okay. I'm going to do it for the intro. <laughs> well, I definitely, I have ADHD, so I definitely will get distracted by a chicken on your head. By so. the night. <laughs> yeah. Hey, welcome back to Too Hard, Too Fast, the podcast with strong opinions about things that we may or may not know too much about in order to broaden perspectives. Today, I'm going to fanboy a whole ton because if you ask anybody, I am a huge fan of the Olympics. And I, I don't think I know anybody right now that can say they're as big as a fan as I am. So this is a true honor to have a, a, an Olympian with us, a USA team USA team USA. Sorry about the hockey. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about okay. this situation in a little bit. Hockey is at least a real sport. Okay. <laughs> what? No, no. So we have Nina Kucho Kelly. Uh, oh, and Worm just showed up. All right, Worm just showed up. I hope he has a shirt on when the camera turns on. Hey, uh, Nina Kutro Kelly is here with us. She just participated in the to Tokyo 2020, 2021. It's both. They've heard both. They use both. I mean, I'm sure when I'm old, I won't remember what year it was, but uh, I was there for the Tokyo Olympics. Yeah. And that's all that matters. And I'm going to go ahead and take this ridiculous awesome patriotic chicken eagle off my head but uh let's sit back buckle up and let's go too hard too fast awesome welcome back welcome back welcome to too hard too fast too hard too fast too hard too fast too hard too fast welcome to too hard too fast Welcome back to Too Hard Too Fast, and my name is Nina Kutra Kelly. I'm a 2021 Judo Olympian, and I'm happy to be here. Go Team USA! Nice. USA! The podcast of the century. It's the <laughs> All right, so 100%, Nina. Oh, I can put on my shirt. <laughs> Are you undercover? Who, me? Yeah, you got a mask on. Yeah, I am. Uh, it's it's still the pandemic, so uh, I'm wrapping and I'm being safe. Okay, all right, I gotcha. <laughs> so, if uh, if we give you one, would you wear one? Yeah, I'll wear one. Uh, I don't have to. I don't have to get masks too often anymore. But I I, I do if I go to the grocery store for sure. Hmm. All right. I all right, keep good. I keep telling Worm he keeps offering it to the guests because. The we would give masks to the guest as a gift for being on the podcast, mm -hmm. but and I keep George telling Worm that we stopped giving out the 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 mask, but now we're giving out koozies. Oh, so, a koozie even better. Be good. I could use a there koozie goes. with my seltzer or a beer on another day. That'd be good. Yeah, there you go. It's to protect your beer. So there you go. That's perfect. <laughs> From getting perfect. sick. So. <laughs> So then there you go. So we'll send some, we'll send a couple your way, a black one and a blue one. Uh, awesome. We'll get together and see how I can get them to you. Perfect. That's much appreciated. Mm -hmm. But like I was saying, I'm a huge fan and I, I think I'm kind of like, I was getting nervous as this podcast was coming up, our episode, because I am a huge fan of the Olympics. So, it, I, you know, when I message people on Instagram or email whatever i always say it's, it would be an honor because it is an honor anybody that wants to come on the podcast but for you to be an olympian and i watch you you uh, athletes all of, like for every four years it's like oh man like my wife was like i don't think anybody watches the olympics the way you do there's no way well we always like fans especially fans for any sport because judo can become some somewhat of a niche sport in the u.s and so uh, everyone thinks we do karate or jiu-jitsu or something like that. And and actually what we do is way cooler than karate and jiu-jitsu. No offense to anybody who does either of those. Uh, but uh, anyhow. No uh, offense taken. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, we do <laughs> I, nothing. I do a bit of jiu-jitsu, so it's okay. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Happy to talk about judo, talk about the Olympics, anything you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. All of it. So um before we get into all that, I, we do want to ask you, what are you drinking? 
Um, well, I am running judo practice tonight, and so I have to have a seltzer. And then at some other point, I have a Gatorade Zero <laughs> because I was teaching judo earlier, and I have to go and uh, teach more judo. But tonight I'll have wine, but not 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 right now. <laughs> <laughs> and we can always jump back on. Uh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So, what is the name of that drink? And we're gonna have you rate it between a one point to two for too hard, too fast. Okay. You think that's the most. Um, what would you rate it on the fact of how, how it tastes, if it's flavored and the price compared to, well, I was going to say compared to the alcohol content, but there's no uh, alcohol content on that. Uh, this is, it's called AHA, H, uh, A -H -A, sparkling water. Actually, I'd never gotten it before. It came from Amazon Fresh. I don't believe in, in uh, shopping in grocery stores if I can avoid it. So I order my food so I can meal prep during my day. Uh, my real job, I'm an uh, English as a second language teacher for a French company. And so I kind of have to balance my morning work with calling French people and torturing them learning English and then running around teaching judo in the afternoon. So, uh, yeah, I drink a lot of water because my mouth gets dry talking on the phone. And uh, this is all right. I, I'd give it a 1.5 because it's, it's not it's not amazing. It's not the best I've had, but it's for the price. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Have you ever had a, you're, you're here in San Antonio, right? Yes, I'm here in San Antonio. Yes. Uh -huh. So have you ever had from H-E-B the 1877 water, mineral water? I saw that. Yeah, I haven't had it though, no. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, I was just, I was going to ask if you, that was, I was going to ask you to compare it, but. Since no, it's like, <laughs> I like, I like Topo Chico, but you can't get that delivered with Amazon. So unfortunately i i just go with what i can get you know fast to my house and keep it cold in my fridge in my office so yeah fair enough fair enough worm what are you drinking you already showed a little bit that's right someone who would be proud of all our u.s olympians and everything samuel adams oh october october fast. you're getting ready for october then I am. we just happened to, we just became september though yeah i know well i'm i am i am ahead of my time so <laughs> well it doesn't like a, I guess Oktoberfest kind of like lands between September and October, right? You gotta start early. I yeah, mean, if there's a skeleton. Early. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a skeleton behind me. Oh, you're getting ready for Halloween. Yeah, <laughs> everyone really like everyone really likes uh, October and Halloween down here. We didn't have so much of that up north, but where I'm from, I'm from Albany, New York, and we don't celebrate the way you do down here. So I definitely have fun with everybody down here and Oktoberfest and Wurstfest in San Antonio. Yeah. Oh, worst fest, man. I, I hope they have it. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't gone in a long in a good while. Yeah. I went to the last one and I think it was 2019 before everything hit the fan. But uh it, it was it was definitely an experience. So mm -hmm. so how is it different? Like you say you you don't celebrate it as as we do over here. How do you celebrate it up there? Well, I think because it gets super, super cold. We can't like, I mean, like sometimes you go trick-or-treating, but you're only out for a short period of time. And I mean like by by almost November it could be in the you know 20s by the evening so you don't really want to go out and go door to door and so I guess it's, it's probably just because the weather's better down here that it's more more popular mm -hmm. and you, you were only up there to from the research to like even before you were 10 right or no um all right so I grew up in Albany New York I went to college in Schenectady, which is right next to Albany. And then I went to France for eight years after uh, college. And I've been in San Antonio um, since 2014 full time, but from 2006 to 2014, I still trained out of a club here when I was in, in the US. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. Uh, we're going to get into that. But before, Worm, did you want to give a rating? Have you talked about that before? Your beer? Yeah, I have. Oh, this guy, you got to bring on something time. new. All right. So I'm drinking this ghost energy, a flavored warhead thing. Oh, warheads. I remember those. Yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> you know what? That's exactly what I saw when, when I was walking through the HEBs, through the aisles. That's exactly why I saw this. I was like, ghost, what is that? And I saw energy and I was like, I'm not a big energy drink fan. So I don't now. I usually don't go for it. But I saw the warhead. I have to try it. <laughs> so, let's just stare at them, drink it. 
Hi. Um, oh, it's super sour. Oh. It's exactly what you would think a warhead. What exactly what a warhead is? Okay. It hits you like right back here. Oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like sour things or you don't need no, a sour? You're not, not a sour fan? Thing. No, I mean, I guess I have sour, sour patch kids, maybe, but it's just not my thing. I like chocolate, yeah. Oh, mm. so you like sour patch kids? A little bit, yeah. I'll eat those. All right. Yeah. So yeah. I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna bring that one on, but hold on, hold on. Okay. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll continue the, the conversation. What's your favorite drink though? Uh, I like red wine. That's definitely my, my drink of choice if I'm going to have a dry or sweet. A, uh, dry. Yeah. I, dry. I, well, I, li I, li I lived in France. And so uh, most of the <laughs> wine that we get uh, is would have been from Bordeaux, which is like this. It's the West Coast, but about halfway down on the outside of the, of the coast. And uh, it's more dry. Usually you would probably drink it with like like strong cheese or red meat or whatever, mm. but I, I'll drink it just by itself. <laughs> yeah, drink yeah, it for yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's um, definitely my drink of choice. <laughs> so are you good with that? Like, are you good with like pairing thing, pairing wine with uh, the proper food? I mean, you can't really live in France without learning what they think you should do. But then there's also, I and not as particular as they are in general, but uh, yeah, no, I, I know more or less how to do that. Yeah. Well, since you mentioned uh, sour patch, ghost energy also has a sour. Patch oh my one. gosh. Okay. Well then you're and ready I've, for that one. <laughs> I've never heard this uh, about this energy drink before, but um, so thinking of this one, I think, I think the price is like a dollar something. Mm. So it's not too bad. It's a big can and it's, a good flavor if you like sour. I would go a one point, a one point six three. You know, non-alcoholic, but it's a good like. It has. It says it has no calories, so it's good for like me. Or it has five calories. Oh, that's not bad. All right. Uh, I'll have to. I'll have to look into it. Sometimes you know when I travel, I have to. Well, this will come into my my embarrassing story later. But uh, energy drinks are definitely uh, uh, of use when you need to de jet lag. So. They're actually ex very excellent uh, tool for that. Hmm. What would what's uh, energy drink that you go for? Well, I like uh, the sugar free Red Bull only because that's the only one that officially is approved by uh, USADA and WADA. And you never want them to put some weird vitamin in that's going to make you pee weird. And then they're going to have to double check your pee. And so I just stay safe with that. But if I can't get that, I'll I'll drink whatever I can get a hold of if I need to. But that's usually like before the tournament, just when I've gotten to the country. And it's a few days before and I need to get on that schedule. So, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, I usually pack my four Red Bull for the tournament, though. Yeah, that would suck. It's crazy that, you know, if you get like that weird vitamin, like you said, something that you don't know. Yeah. Like, who, the hell, who knows what they who the hell knows what they put in, you know, energy drinks in Russia or Uzbekistan or something. You don't you don't want to know. Or in the US, because I have I'm looking at this and I have no idea what carne pure carnitine. I don't even know. I think I said that half in English and half in Spanish. Uh, yeah, I never, I never, I never heard of that. So, good. I hope, I it hope says it has okay. no sugars, mm -hmm. so that's a plus. Yeah, no, oh, well. sure. one point oh. six three on it. But I'm gonna add a little bit of tequila into it. Okay, well, you go for that. <laughs> Not a lot, just a little bit. Uh, so, with that said, our ratings in, our reviews in. Uh, I'll be out. Albany, New York. Yes. You. That's where you're originally from. Mm -hmm. um, is that where you got into judo? Yes. So um, I have a pretty bad case of ADHD and I was a bad behaved kid. And I was always big for my age. And I, I liked to fight before I knew how to fight, really. And um, so my parents put me in judo after I'd been kicked out of uh, Little League, ballet, and art class. And so I got mm -hmm. kicked out of those. I was asked not to return. And when I was seven, I started judo. So. Like Little League baseball? or? Oh, yeah. little. It was like t-ball. I was just like, yeah, no. 
You were beating, was, you were you were you were running the mount. <laughs> no, I, I hit the coach with the bat because <laughs> oh, yeah. That's even That's better. What do you think? Of, what what brought that on? Um, I wanted to not bat. I wanted to go eat French fries because my uncle was watching my t-ball game and he had a container of french fries and i'm like five and i'm like oh uncle brian over there has some french fries and i went and walked off because you know i'm five and i didn't listen and then the coach came after me and he's like here here's a bat you guys your turn to bat you got to go up and i was like no no and i kept walking and then <laughs> finally he gave me the bat and i swung at him ran away yeah. climbed the jungle gym they had to go get my father it was a whole thing so uh that that was my last day of playing uh, t-ball so Wow. <laughs> so I feel like there has to be a fighting story with ballet. Yes, there was that too. Um, so I was younger than that. I think I was maybe four and a half. And first of all, my mother comes with a little pink tutu. And I was like, I'm not doing that. That's not happening. Not, no way, no how. And um, so we compromised and she gave me like a little black leotard or whatever. I wore that. And then, I mean, I was just, I was a very active little kid. So I'd run and run and run and run and climb and jump and, or, you know, think, you know, do things first and think about it after. And um, so I remember the, like the teacher was telling us, okay, we're going to like do something creative. We're going to imagine that we're little things. And these little girls were really annoying me because they were all crying for their moms and it, it was silly. And so the little ballerinas were like, oh, I'm a flower. I'm a, you know, beautiful butterfly. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to imagine that I'm an airplane. I'm going to knock them all over. And <laughs> that's exactly what I did. And I was removed and asked not to come back. So, and then the, the art class uh, thing wasn't really bad behavior. <laughs> it was just, they had us go uh, draw mummies at the museum and, they didn't know that I was terrified of mummies when I was five and, <laughs> and I just lost it and, and left. And so that was about that. So then I got put in judo because generally they, they get a lot of problem children. So did, did you like, did you want to be in it at first or? I thought it was going to be like Ninja Turtles. So <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, we can do that. It's fine. Um, and it sounded like it was more fun than the other things I tried, but I liked it right away. Yeah. So it's Thanks. funny because, um, from, for some reason, I don't think I've ever asked my mom about it, but she always wanted to put me in karate mm -hmm. and I, I mostly think because I spent most of my days playing video games and eating Cheetos and I was like, that's clearly no good health diet for a, yeah. for a little kid. Not a sport. Eating videos <laughs> so, and video games, not a sport. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and, but then I always wonder is like, is it because she doesn't think I can defend myself? Like, would she want me to learn to defend myself? I don't know. Which one is it? Is it both? I don't, I've never, it, I think both. I it, it doesn't hurt to know how to defend yourself. And it doesn't hurt to know that you can defend yourself if you have to, because that gives you a different sense of confidence. So that's important for sure. Hmm. Well, needless to say, I never joined uh, karate or anything. I joined football, and so I mean, I still that's, I was that's, still that's playing. That's on my list of that's on my, on my list of real sports. So football, hockey, those are all allowed. So. <laughs> well, speaking of what about baseball so, and swimming? Baseball's okay. Swimming is okay. Trampolining, right. maybe not so much. Shooting, arch archery. It's more like activities, I would call them. But yeah. <laughs> oh man, we're already we're already shitting on those Olympic uh, sports, are we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, I'm not gonna say that they're not sports. I'm saying they're different than like a contact sport or a combat sport. Those are those are the real ones. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say it's not a sport, and so I'm gonna put golf in there too. And yeah, it's an activity come, and people and can be very it. talented <laughs> at it, but that doesn't mean it's a sport sport, you know. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about the Olympics in a little bit, but we want to stick how you got into judo. Uh, a warm, but warm would say that drinking is a sport. I think so, too. It requires stamina. Yeah. Who could drink the most? 
It is. Have a competition you, can, you can make anything into a competition. You'd be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm curious to know who could drink more, huh? The Irish, the Mexicans, the Brits. You know what I mean? Uh, the Irish are up there. I'm half Irish, so uh, I well, definitely would say that they they can put away some alcohol. Um, well, I'm an eighth Irish, so I'm part eighth, of that. All right, that's cool. <laughs> Uh, they, they would welcome you. They would welcome you in in uh, in Ireland. They they love when the when the Americans come home. They call it. So if you're even an eighth Irish, they would well, accept you and be happy to see you. So yeah. So, so I've been to Ireland once actually. So that was pretty cool. You've been to Ireland? Yeah. yeah. Damn. Yeah. I've known this guy for years. This is the first time he said that he's been to well, Ireland. Well, well, I, so I was in Italy too. So when I was in college, I studied abroad in in Rome. Worm, mm -hmm. no, yeah, but this is not about you, Worm. We're not talking no, about your story. You, you are. You've yeah, had your I chance. Know, I regret yeah. asking you about Ireland. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> All right, Nina. So you're in judo. What did you think before going mm -hmm. into judo? What did you think judo? Well, you said it was about Ninja Turtles, but so which one's your favorite for somebody judo? that's not like a whole judo fan? Because we, I think. You know, I'm an MMA fan, and I still don't know everything about that. Uh, I thought karate was a huge contact sport, but then I watched the Olympics, and oh yeah, don't don't not watch the touch. Olympics. Don't 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 watch it. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> it's it's so different the way the way you perceive some kind of like martial arts, and then the way the competition works. But judo is is what I watch on the Olympics really what's happening as the as the way you teach it yeah yeah i mean like granted the people at the olympics are are you know that's the highest level you can get but um the, like i tell i was giving a, a judo lesson earlier today and i'm like these techniques i'm showing you they work at the beginner level and they work at the olympics and it's how people put them together how people set them up etc uh that you know determines you know who's who and who's good. But um, yeah, I mean, it's the same techniques at, at any level and uh, it's the same rules at any level. Mm -hmm. In the Olympics, are you trying to, you're not trying to hurt each other, but are you, like, are you trying to like. You're trying to do whatever you need to do to throw them on their back okay. without breaking the rules. Uh, whatever you need to do to hold them on their back without breaking the rules and whatever you need to do to arm bar them or choke them unconscious. So, I mean, it's not, it's not a nice sport. Um, yeah. and, and if you, they're not going to do it to you, you're going to do it to them. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty savage for somebody who's never seen it before. Mm -hmm. Um, that said, like when you get down to like a very high level with people with, uh, you know, people who are pretty well matched, then you get down to the technicality. It's kind of boring to watch because, you know, they're, they're stopping each other before something can get started. But at, at its like pure level, judo is pretty badass. Yeah. Um, so you don't care about breaking their backs as long as you don't break the rules then. Right. Oh no. You got to pin them on their back and throw them on their back. You shouldn't break the back, but if it happens, I mean, it might happen, you know? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is it one of those uh, Batman moments where you wonder, What's going to give out first, their back or their will? Ah, yes. I was wondering what would break first. <laughs> there's, there's definitely an element of the will. Um, I can tell you uh, with an arm lock, if you've got someone's arm, you know, fully extended and hyperextended hyper and you're, you're, you know, cranking on the arm like you might see in MMA, um, you know, there are people out there that will not give up. And you can break it and this a rule officially says that they have to submit. So it's not like in BJJ or in some sorts of MMA where the referee will call it. Um, you will actually, I mean, I broke a girl's arm in three different directions uh, in the Pan American championships in 2011 and got up and she was hundred pounds heavier and really pissed off. And she jumped on the side of my knee and tore my ACL. And oh. yeah, we both had to share an ambulance, which wasn't pretty. Um, and uh, yeah, we were, you know, you get pretty banged up in this sport, but it's also it's a it's an amazingly fun sport too. So, so in the fact where she hurt your or she tore your ACL, since it's not like something you see right away, you don't have to submit. But like the whole arm dangling. Yeah, well, yeah, no, she was just a hundred pounds heavier than me because I fight in an unlimited weight class, and 
it was a cheap shot. I mean, do I blame her for cheap shotting me? Not really, because I just broke her arm in three directions. But I mean, it did set me back by about eight months in terms of the rehab and the surgery on my knee. So, so yeah. that was after you broke her arm. Like, was she yeah. just angry that you broke her arm? Or she just... Well, she was trying to get me, but she couldn't get me. And so we went in like kind of a tussle out of bounds and the referee said stop. But then she kind of just like dramatically fell on the side of my leg, which was like flexed to get up to get back to the line. And that's how she took, but it was a cheap shot. But I mean, you can't prove it. And yeah, yeah, these yeah. things happen. It's life. You know, uh, that was 10 years ago. So I, I, I would say I'm over it, but I'm not completely over it you know? it's hard well, I mean, she basically cover cover kind you sweep the leg you have a problem with that no mercy yeah and, yeah, and uh yeah. you're you're you just you like you said you lost eight months of your your life because this is like everything you do like this is what you train for uh, i mean not everything you do obviously you're a teacher as well but it's a big part of your life so i, I can't even imagine i mean i hurt my me getting up out of bed and I'm out for two weeks. Oh, so. yeah, no, there's, there's, I mean, and I'm, I'm telling you, except knock on wood for that one injury that I had, most of my biggest uh, injuries were something really dumb, like tripping over my own feet and falling in a drainage ditch, walking the dog on Sunday, completely sober, you know, um, what's the other things I've done? I fell off the curb because the sun was in my eyes and I was talking on the phone, not paying attention. So, I mean, like that being said, I'm pretty coordinated on the judo map, but get me off the judo map. There's all kinds of things that could get me. So, you know, that's, that's, yeah, I'm that's always on the lookout for things that like for, you know, trap doors and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, going back, uh, what, what made you go to uh, France? So um, I was in college, uh, like, uh, you know, a lot of people do. I studied abroad in France, but I picked France because it had a really high level of judo. They've got some of the best judo in the world after Japan. And uh, so while I was there, I got to train like five, six days a week. I got access to really high level players um, and my judo got really good in the six months I was there for school. And so I was about to graduate college and I kind of said to myself, you know, like, I want to come back here. And I was supposed to go to law school. And I was like, eh, you know, I'd be really young to go to law school. I don't want to like be that serious this young, I, you know, because I went to college early. So I was going to graduate at, like 21 in a couple days. And uh, so I was like, oh, and I found a job in France right after I graduated college and uh, ended up there. I was there for you know, a few years and then I didn't know what else I wanted to do. And then I did my master's degree there. So, so um, that's kind of how I ended up there, but the training is, is phenomenal. And that's uh, a big part of my, my judo level today is that I got to train in one of the best countries in the world for judo. Mm -hmm. So um, did you know that you wanted to do something with judo for the rest of your life, or you just knew you wanted to practice judo? So um, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, when I was 14, so I'd already been training like recreationally at a judo club. My dad had done some judo. Uh, it was something I did with my dad, uh, my sister after me and the brother after that. Um, they did a little bit of judo. It was something that we did as a family. Um, but then that club closed. And um, so I went to the only club that in the area that uh, my dad was cool with me going to. And uh, that's my coach. He's still my coach today, Jim Herbeck. He was the 92 Olympic coach and he runs uh, Universal Judo here in San Antonio. And uh, he was up in Albany at the time. And I went to a tournament and I got beat by this girl who was way smaller than me. And she just kicked the snot out of me. Like there was, there was, it was really pretty embarrassing. And um, then I was like, well, I want to go to, I want to go to that club because that club was really good. And I went there like expecting to be pretty recreational in terms of the training. And then my coach was like, you know, actually like you could be really good. And I'm like, no, no, no. I just want to come a couple of times a week. I want to get a good workout. It's fun. It's good for, you know, all my bad energy when I get angry or whatever. And, um, and so he started like making me work with a group of girls who were already pretty like advanced. And I was the weakest in the group. I got my butt kicked. I was physically strong, but really, really like uh, green in terms of judo. Oh. And uh, then they finally got me in uh, into that group. And, uh, so I started training there when I was 14 and the year I was 17, I made the junior world team for the U S and that's when I really started competing internationally. So that was, uh, almost 20 years ago. 
And at what point did you say, I think I can make this to the, take it to the Olympics? I want to say about, I was about 22. And then uh, the past, you know, 14, 15 years, I was always very close to making the Olympic team, but there was always something that happened, you know, that, that match where uh, the girl blew my ACL that took me out of the running for 2012, uh, 2016, I missed just by a few points. Um, and then, uh, you know, 2020, 2021, whatever we want to call it, uh, that was my, my chance to go. So at any point that you feel like that's ah, not my, it's not going to happen. Or oh yeah. Oh yeah. Listening? Well, okay. So I had tentatively planned on retiring, uh, from international competition, uh, if I went to Tokyo or not, because, you know, I'm going to be 37 this year and. Uh, at some point, something's got to give. And and I wouldn't say I have anything like really wrong with my body. It's just it's wear and tear. Um, you know, I've had stem cells in different parts of my body. It's a, And it, it becomes harder and harder to maintain the, the level of fitness and, and strength and cardio the older you get, as anybody knows. And so it was really like, you know, the end of the road for high level, you know, Olympic level judo for me. Um, but I made it this time. So that was, that was uh, pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. It, it is. It's super, it's not pretty. It's, it's yeah. freaking awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Coming from someone, you know, yeah. I mean, what, am, what do I know? But just, I'm just a fan. Yeah. We'll never reach that level. <laughs> um, but Unless drinking could be in a, a game. <laughs> <laughs> before going more into the Olympics, I'm I'm kind of like wondering like or actually what how many hours would you say you put in in training to be able to to reach such a high level? I mean realistically if you think that you're going to go to the Olympics for judo um you need to be training 5 days a week for judo and you probably need to be working out anywhere from 15 to 20 hours a week. And that's, that's like a realistic amount. Um, and it become like, I mean, I was working out two and a half to three hours a day. Um, and, and sometimes more uh, with one day off a week and maybe one lighter day a week. Um, that said, I mean, when you're young, you know, really you just need to focus on getting a good skill set, getting good conditioning and strength. Um, but I mean, once you, once you're, you've decided you want to make an Olympic team, you, you need to be training like that. And then that breaks down the fact that in the United States, it doesn't matter. You could be the best person in the United States for decades. I, I was the number one American in, in my weight category for 10 plus years, but I wasn't an Olympian because the, the selection process is so strict. So like you have to be in the top 18 in the world to guarantee to go. So you start off by being national champion, by being undefeated in this country, and then you throw, you know, your, you know, your money. You, yeah, yeah. Then you go in, then you go up against the whole world. And so that's one of the things a lot of people don't know. They're like, oh, well, you're, you're number one in the country. And I'm like, yeah, it doesn't matter if I'm number one in the country. You know, that's, that's a baby step in the right direction. Um, but, you know, you're, you're not going to the Olympics unless you're, you're amongst the top 18 in the world guaranteed maybe 25 yeah and, <coughs> sorry and i think this year was one of the smallest teams uh judo teams that has ever the, the usa for the has us ever had. yeah yeah because i mean um we had three women who qualified through the direct qualification system which meant we were in you know that top 18 in the world uh once they took out um countries that had multiple people qualified. So like there could be three Russians, but they're only allowed to send one. There could be three Japanese, they're only allowed to send one. So once they take out the doubles and the triples in the world ranking list, then we were in those top 18 in the world. Um, And then they're allowed one additional spot, which goes to the person who has the most uh, international points who isn't otherwise qualified. And so then we had a guy go who was uh, in 198 pounds. And so there's just the four of us. Uh, but that said, like we were a really close knit team and, um, uh, you know, we'd all been on the road together for the past, for the five years leading up to that. Um, and we'd all been, you know, of the four of us, there was the four of us plus a couple others who were 
in the mix for medals, you know, um, internationally, not the Olympics, but in the, uh, you know, we were the best in the country. And so we all kind of really developed just like, you know, small group and a uh, pretty good working relationship as a team. Yeah. So you guys knew each other before being on. The oh team yeah. Team. Oh yeah. No, it, it's a, it's a, not, it's a small enough sport that everybody knows everybody at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I mean, when, when you get up to that level, I mean, it can't just be all dedication, right? There has to be, I mean, natural talent and dedication. Like a, there has to obviously be a lot of natural talent then, right? Um, so that's, that? that's a good question. So, um, yeah, talent comes into it. Um, but, you know, the whole thing, hustle beats talent when talent doesn't hustle. If you can work your butt off, you're going to be able to beat people that are talented. So mm. if, if, ta if, you're, mm. if you're talented and you work hard, then, yeah, you, yeah. Have, yeah, then you know, that's, that's a, a really uh, awesome combination. But what happens with people who have this natural talent, a lot of times they take it for granted. And they, you know, wander off mm -hmm. to go do something else or, or maybe it's just not what they want to do or maybe, you know, something that, um, you know, isn't, isn't that important to them. So uh, when you can combine somebody who's talented, who works hard, that's, that's an amazing, you know, discovery as a, um, mm -hmm. as a, for an athlete. But, I mean, it, you really can't discount the, the value of hard work and dedication, you know. Definitely. So when you started young, um, would you say you had some natural talent or it was just all I'm really just developing all that skill set? I'm strong as an ox and I'm stubborn. Like I, I have some pretty <laughs> ridiculous natural strength without having to work all that hard. Um, so that, I guess, definitely was some some natural, you know, good genes. Um, yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh, maybe there's some talent involved in, in terms of my understanding of the sport. But uh, I wasn't always good. Like, I mean, I definitely had my, my you know, young teenage years. I got my butt kicked. I, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I didn't understand how to break down the, the techniques. And it, I was definitely in my early 20s before I really started to, to be able to break judo down into little, little elements so that I could then teach other people mm -hmm. it, which then made me better because I had, like, really dissected each of the moves to be able to help other people with it. Yeah. Mm, nice. So, Olympics. I know you're you're on a time crunch, so I want to get into the Olympics. No um, I I was texting you, and I told you that there was a uh, some bad news with the judo shirt. All right, we're gonna take a pause in the conversation here. We're going too hard, too e. fast with Nina Kucho Kelly, e. Team USA Olympian you in judo. Hey. Oh man, I'm totally freaking out. This is a like a true honor. Um, fanboying out, I can barely it even is speak. an honor. It is. I mean, I love the Olympics and the, the hard work that these athletes put in. Oh man, we're gonna talk more with Nina about her yeah. experience in the 2020, 2021 Tokyo Olympics. I still don't know what to call it, what year, but we're gonna talk about her experience there and we're gonna answer some of the questions that came in from Too Hard Too Fast Podcast on Instagram. Follow us if you ever want to ask a question to one of our guests. But with that said, Worm, what are you going to say? Hey, make drinking an Olympic sport. Because it is. Because it is. Remember, dare to be you. Dare to be weird. We'll see you guys on Thursday. Team USA. Team USA.